We recently started talking a lot about psychology on this channel, but the way that we talk about it is from a very modern perspective. You and I can have a conversation about mental illness, we can go out and get treatment if we need it, we can sometimes talk openly about it, and for a lot of us, our issues can be helped with therapy or medication. But this isn't the way that it always was. There's a huge history to psychology that is much, much darker and much more complex than what we have now. So today I want to welcome you to the very first episode of A History of Psychology and Medicine. What's crack? It's Vangelina Skov, and today we're going to be talking about lobotomies. You may have actually heard of lobotomies before from movies like Shutter Island or Sucker Punch. But what actually are they? Originally called leucotomies, lobotomies are a form of neurosurgical treatment, which used to be used to treat a wide variety of psychological disorders. During the surgery, the connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex are severed. Namely, the connections to the frontal lobe in the brain are severed. Now, you may think that with the surgery so severe, there would be specific uses for it, but it was sort of a one-size-fits-all kind of treatment for mental disorders back in the 1900s. But not just that. It was also sometimes used to treat chronic pain or backaches, as well as things like depression or schizophrenia. So let's go back to the beginning of this procedure. The first leucotomy was done in 1935 by a Portuguese neurologist named Antonio Egas Manitz. That might not be the correct pronunciation, but that's the best I can do. During this first attempt, he drilled holes into the skulls of patients in order to access their brain. Now, given what we know today about leucotomies and lobotomies, we could think that he would have stopped there and that people would have criticized him or even shunned him, but actually he won a Nobel Prize for this in medicine in 1949. And he of course wasn't the only person to perform this procedure. It took off in Europe and in America after that. And according to some sources, the US performed more lobotomies than any other country in the world. And that all started with psychiatrist Walter Freeman. In 1936, he performed the US's first prefrontal lobotomy, which he now had renamed lobotomy when it was originally called leucotomy. And throughout the years, he performed several of these on mentally ill patients, hoping to calm them down. But he wanted to find a more efficient way to do them rather than drilling directly into a patient's skull. So on January 17th, 1946, he performed the first transorbital lobotomy, which is more commonly called an ice pick lobotomy. And this procedure only took 10 minutes. And the reason this is commonly called an ice pick lobotomy is because he would use a long ice pick type instrument, a very sharp piece of metal, put it on top of the patient's eye and push back into the socket and access the frontal lobes of the brain from there. And he would do this on each side. It's worth noting as well that some sources have claimed that to render the patients unconscious, they would use electroshock. Now at this time in history, antipsychotic medications still did not exist. And the only other treatment for mentally ill people was to send them to asylums, which were overcrowded, underfunded, and basically a horrible place to be. And it's because of this that Freeman's ice pick lobotomies became so popular. They were widespread and used all across America and again in Europe as well. And Freeman himself even performed over 2,500 of these procedures during his career. That's a lot. Some people have even said that he performed 25 of them in just one day. That just goes to show you how many people were receiving these treatments. Now obviously if all of these procedures were a failure they wouldn't have been done, but a lot of them went quite well and were very successful. Others however completely destroyed the lives of the people who underwent them. Some people died during the procedures, others died later from brain hemorrhages due to the procedure. Some some people even ended up experiencing worse mental health disorders because of these procedures. And one fairly common outcome to this was that the patients would become completely incapacitated 
and would need to be institutionalized for the rest of their lives. One of the people who was unfortunate enough to have this happen to them was actually Rosemary Kennedy, who was the sister of President John F. Kennedy. So understandably, there was a lot of professionals who were completely against these procedures and criticized them from the start. However, since they did work some of the time, there were others who argued that they were the best that they could do. And some doctors and psychiatrists even regarded them as a miracle cure. Eventually though, the good outcomes stopped outweighing the bad outcomes. And from the 1950s onwards, the country slowly started to ban lobotomies. However, they were still in use to a smaller degree up into the 1980s. In the present day, you will not find a single lobotomy being done. Now, unfortunately, there are no exact numbers as to how many of these procedures were performed during the course of their history. However, between the 1940s and 1950s, it's estimated that in the US alone, 40 to 50,000 of these were done. So you can only imagine how big the number is for the entire world. Lobotomies were only around for a short time, but during that time they completely devastated the lives of countless people. Thankfully though, that's something we can leave in history. That's going to be it for this history of psychology and medicine. If you guys would like to see more of this series, please let me know in the comments. I really enjoyed doing this video and I really want to do more, so I hope you guys like it. So leave your support by commenting, sharing and all that. And of course, you can subscribe and click the bell button to get notifications when I upload. You can also follow me on social media if you feel like it. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.